So when I was first starting to learn about adult development theory or vertical development, um, I, I realized um, not only for myself, but from others who were also learning about this. So that there tend to be some common kind of misconceptions or assumptions that we, we can make that aren't necessarily helpful. So I thought I'd speak to those. So one of them is uh, to be careful about putting people in boxes. Sometimes because there are other models of personality and things that we're, we're used to, to working with, we think that, oh, if I can just type a person, then I'll understand them. And the, the framework of adult development is different. In itself, it represents movement, the potential to grow and change, right? It's not about being static. Um, so I'd caution against you know, trying to put people in boxes, trying to identify, ooh, what stage is someone at? Because then I think you know, I can know them, I can, I can understand who they are, right? This is, um, this is not about low potential and high potential. It's not about you know, how people are forever. It's, it's a useful framework for understanding where might somebody be at now? Where might their center of gravity be in terms of how they're making sense of the world? What kind of challenges might be the things that they're looking at as challenges at this particular um, moment in time? And, and what might be next? You know, how might they be transitioning? How might we support them um, when we're working in spaces um, of, of leadership or, or people in culture um, or in coaching? Um, how might we support individuals to continue to move? Um, so supporting that, that fluidity. Um, so I think that's important to remember is it's not about pigeonholing people. Um, so it's about understanding how we can support people to grow and develop over time. Another aspect I think that's important to keep in mind is uh, I often see people, and I, I know myself included, can get really excited when you first learn about this framework of adult development. and. And you get really curious about like, ooh, where might I be? Where might others be? Um, and a, a pattern I, I tend to see is that we, we can often overestimate where we are um, ourselves in, in the stages um, of development. And when there are certain people in our lives that we tend to have disagreements with, or that we find difficult, we can tend to us underestimate where um, their capacities might lie. Um, so I'd say just, just be aware of that, um, that tendency. We all have uh, the potential to make sense at, at, at different stages, you know, up to um, the kind of uh, latest stage that we've managed to grow into. Um, we can access all the earlier stages and often when we're in a conflict situation or something's triggered us, we can fall back into one of our earlier stages and be making, you know, sense of things from there. And so that doesn't give you an ask, um, a full picture of somebody's capacity, um, you know, where their latest um, stage of growth might be at. So just just be aware of that, be mindful. I'd encourage um, not to jump to conclusions about where you think um, somebody might be. So another element to keep in mind is that in this adult development framework or vertical development, um, we, we don't skip stages, right? There, there's, um, there's a predictability to this movement and, and the stages are consecutive. So the growth, if, there were, if I was to offer a metaphor, one of the ones I find really useful is to think about how trees grow, like the rings of a tree um, grow over time. So you, you still have that core from that earlier stage of development um, that you've, you've come from. And with each successive growth, you, know, you add a new ring with new capacities. Um, those successive stages just build on top of each other. And so we never lose access to those, those earlier stages. We have the potential to operate from any of them and make sense of the world from, from any of them up to the, the latest stage that we've managed to grow into at that point. And it's interesting to, to keep in mind that one's stage of development, one's cognitive development is, is not necessarily correlated with age. Um, so there, there can be some young people who may have, um, due to circumstances in their life and the support they've had access to, they may um, have managed to grow into a later stage at an earlier age. And there may be some um, people who make it to quite a late age who are still at an earlier stage because they haven't had the, the need or the support to develop um, further. So. Um, I think that's that's important to keep in mind. Um, the success, the stages are successive, like rings of a, we grow like rings of a tree, um, and it's not necessarily correlated to age. So as we grow, like these rings of a tree, um, we have the potential to move between 
the stages and to make sense of different situations in different ways. Whatever's, whatever's the best fit you know, for the stage, we can consciously choose to flow between the stages. You know, and, and this might be an example where we say, you know, um, I'm navigating traffic <laughs> and I don't need to be, you know, asking lots of questions, taking lots of perspectives and, you know, pondering things um, from a very zoomed out perspective. It's like, no, I just need to be clear, present, you know, very close in, making sense of the, the traffic right in front of me. That's all I need access to in that moment. So maybe operating from an opportunist or a diplomatic um, form of mind is, is perfect for navigating traffic on my morning commute. And then we might show up in a meeting where we're discussing, you know, how to take our organization forward. And there may be lots of different perspectives around the table and, and I may need to access, you know, the latest stage that I've managed to develop into. And so I may choose to um, try to show up from that space and really zoom out more, get up on the balcony and, and access a broader range of perspectives, for example. That flow and that choice is sometimes available to us. Um, oftentimes when we're well-resourced and we're not in situations that uh, are highly emotionally charged or we're feeling triggered. Now, of course, if we do find ourselves um, completely drained, burned out, or in a situation um, where we're feeling triggered by something, then we may, without much conscious choice, uh, do what researchers such as uh, Valerie Live say, who's um, written a lot about uh, this space of fallback. We, we may fall back without that consciousness um, into an earlier stage and operate from that place. This can happen, um, you know, oftentimes for people when they're dealing maybe with their family systems or, you know, familiar patterns that um, can be um, agitating for us, you know, particular situations. So um, that's something to be aware of. Sometimes, um, you know, context like the pandemic even um, can, can cause us not to have access to our, our latest stage, you know, our most resourced self, our biggest self. Um, and so we may um, be operating from an earlier stage. That can be useful to keep in mind for yourself and also for the people around you.